So uh, when I was at the uh, Centre for Computing History in Cambridge, um, they, it was in 6th of July 2019, the Dragon Meet, I think, um, they had a free stuff Friday table. And this was on there, which is a Z80 microprocessor development system um, with a nice big chunky power supply and a rack. I um, already took the cover off and there's actually nothing inside it much, but uh, that is uh, an interesting board in there, which is obviously a bit hand. Is a, I think it's a cassette interface, so I'm taking it apart a little bit, and some kind of PIO connection to a, a back plane with a DIN connector, and there's a hand wired uh, back plane in there, obviously hooked up several cards, I think CPU memory. Um, so it occurred to me it'd be uh, nice to get that working again. Um, obviously other projects took over and uh, various things meant that it's uh, now 2020 and I still haven't completed it but uh, it did get round to um, getting some parts for a, uh, one of Grant Searle's uh, single board Z80 units so it would make a good basis for this and maybe hook it up so uh, I've just about managed over the last few uh, weeks to assemble all the parts to build that so I think we'll uh, we'll put it together and uh, as we follow up through this uh, series of works and I'll get the power supply working on this as well and um, we can use the power up and maybe even get the cassette interface running on it as a longer term project so let's go and have a little look at what this kit consists of. So this was the uh, Z80 single board kit this is actually the 32k version which is a slightly modified one. Um, I've, I bought the PCB on eBay purchase just a bit of PCB, it did come quite uh, with um, a drawn out circuit diagram which is quite nice um, and I've assembled all the various parts over the uh, the last few weeks as I said so I've um, got myself a Z80, some memory, uh, interface chip, some, an EEPROM, a couple of uh, ICs which are all you need and all the the sockets they're just pushed in at the moment just to make sure I had all the right ones and some headers and the nine pinned in. Um, you can you know, a little excellent jack socket as well for powering her up. So I'm going to put this kit together I think and see where we get to and there's a little bit it's going to be an experience for me. You're going to have to program the EEPROM. Um, I'm hoping I've got an EEPROM program that can cope with that one I think so it's a 12.1 volt uh, device. So off we go let's, uh, let's start with an assembly. I obviously won't subject you to the uh, full assembly minute by minute, uh, speed it up for you. The first thing to put in of course are all the resistors, because um, they're the low pro lowest profile on the board so it's nice and easy to sit the board flat and solder them all up and crop the leads off all in one go as a first step. This is fairly standard when you're assembling a board like this. Next I put the 1N4002 diode in. And then all the IC sockets, again, they're the next highest in profile. So, uh, little tip, just put something underneath the sockets when you turn the board over so they don't all fall out before you solder them. It's quite handy, I used a coaster in this case. Yeah, it's quite a lot of soldering joints, obviously it's the major part of a small uh, board with a lot of ICs on it like this. Okay, so uh, we just put the uh, IC sockets on. And the resistors previously. The next item to go on, of course, is one of these little uh, uh, resistor packs, which are a uh, little bit. If you haven't seen one before, they've got a little dot on the uh, on the end, which uh, probably can't be focused on. There we go, and that's the common position. Which, if we show you, because what we got is uh, put it down on there. And you should be able to see the meter. And if I put the uh, the black the, the, one of the probes on the common. And we should have 4.7k to every one of the, the connectors. So there we go, 4.7 on that one, 4.7 on that one, and 4.7 on that one. So each one of them, it's five-way one, so 4.7k on each of them. So that goes into the board uh, fairly easily. There's a mark, a square for it for the common point. So that goes in like that, and we can solder that into position. Now we resume by putting the decoupling capacitors on, one pretty much associated with every chip on the board, the 100 nanofarad caps, uh, fairly quick to solder on, there's a few of them but not too many, not as many as the IC sockets. Once we've done that little bit then we can move on, 
find the electrolytics, uh, making sure of course to get them the right way around with a negative film with a bar on the can moving away. And um, once we've done that, we're going to fit the next bits of hardware, the D9, uh, DB9 connector for the serial port, and also the jack socket for the power. So uh, once they're done, we need to quite a hot tank iron there because it's quite metal. Well, that was a bit silly, wasn't it? I soldered uh, another one in for 002 in as D2. When, of course, actually it's supposed to be an LED. I packed two in the kit. So I just randomly put them in. I thought it was a bit unusual. It was sat on end as well. So I didn't show me desoldering it. But uh, I'm just going to clear the hole so I can put the LED in there. So there we go. That's a bit daft. Proves we can all make a bit of a mistake, doesn't it? So that just leaves the crystal to put on there, which is uh, quite cute and quite small, and that should fit in nicely in the Y1 position. And check it's actually the right frequency, shall we? So uh, once it's in, let's turn it down, and the two is. 7.3728 Egg, yep, yeah, there we go. Bring some of the crystal in. Should put the solder temperature down a little bit probably when I was desoldering. There we go. Job done. Uh, that is pretty much and I gotta now jerry rig something for a reset button because I forgot to buy one so I said it would have to be a bit of a jury rig well I managed to cut two of the uh, connectors off of this uh, tiny little PCB mountable switch uh, which because these are actually three commons and one uh, place for the reset so with it twisted round and inserted in a board like that I think there we go it's a bit skew but it's a reset button there we go, that'll do. I really must be more organised when I sort the bombs out, shouldn't I? I think we've completed, pretty much. Um, we just need to plug in the ICs and program an EEPROM and hook up a serial connector and we should see uh, a version of the NASCOM BASIC adapted by Mr Searle to work. And we've got a working Z80 board with 32 uh, I'm not sure where this device came from. I assume it's second hand. It's got some stickers on the top of it. So we just, uh, that was interesting. I read it in. Oh, look, it's full of stuff. So uh, I might as well save the contents and have a little play around and look at it afterwards. So no idea what might be in it. But uh, before I, I'll have to erase it then. Okay. That means getting out the ultraviolet and a little bit of a... Okay, so there we are, it's in the eraser, you can see the little blue glow. Uh, give it about a minute and three quarters, that should be more than enough, and we'll see if it's blank afterwards. Okay, well that's a bit better, it's all F's in it. Of course it was more than one minute, they marked the uh, erasers in uh, ten minute steps, so uh, it was about twelve to thirteen minutes there to erase it totally. Okay, so uh, we can plug in our chips now we've programmed this. Uh, uh, what we have got to do though, of course, is to stop the uh, any ultraviolet rays in it stray from the sunlight tomorrow. We just stick a little sticker over the window so it can't be done. And I'll use that as a label. There we go. So we don't want to forget what's on the chip. Okay, now we got the sum for LS32. Should have got the notch the right way around. Nice and firmly in. And we've got a sum for HCT04 here. I have previously tested all these chips in the chip tester. Just to well the ones I can anyway. So. And now we got the 6850p referral interface adapter. 
need the max 232 which is the one that converts the um, TTL RS232 signals available on this header into actual ones for a DB9 old, old fashioned serial uh, that chip orientation is actually the other way around on this board so um, put the RAM chip in 256 uh, pins a little bit splayed so Going in, pulling, and now the sent CPU, the Z80. It was famous for its use in so many machines, like the Red NASCOM that the basic where this is based on is from. And then later on, the Spectrum, <coughs> and of course, is the uh, basis of the uh, design for the Spectrum next. There we go then, so in theory, quick check of the board, make sure there's nothing. I did have a little good look earlier for any shorts or solder splashes. I haven't got anything, another quick check to make sure I'm not seeing any obvious bridges. Uh, got any missed solder joints, double check it all. I haven't put the experience, I'll have a bit of gunk on there, oh, it's just a bit of gunk, there we go. Uh, okay. No, I haven't put the expansion connector on yet because I'm still not quite sure how I'm going to hook it up. Okay, so in theory now, this should be my uh, serial cable from the uh, PC. It should go in here. I've set the mini term up on the PC. Um, we also need a 5 volt power feed, which I'll take from the bench power supply because I can see if it over uh, overdoes it. Actually, I'm going to disconnect the serial a minute while we power it up for the first time. Okay, so uh, the acid test is do we get um, a little LED activity and does it drain too much current? Bench power's on and nice clean 5 volt drawing about 180 milliamps. So. Chances are we're alright, so let's uh, let's see what's on the serial port then, shall we? Set to 9.6k. And nothing, obviously. Let's try resetting it in case something happens when it does a reset. Nope, absolutely diddly, but we don't know whether that's the, uh, the serial port or not. So, I'm going to power it off a minute. The chips feel very hot. Um, have we got any activity on the serial line whatsoever? Um, if we put a little bit of a... Okay. So, we've just got a little breakout box now. Um, which should mean I can see... If I press return, do I see any data? No, I've not actually ever used a serial port on this PC before. Um, I've had to swap the PC recently, so I'm not even completely convinced that's working. Okay, I've even got the right serial port, who knows. So let's try on a little look at data the other way anyway, just in case, and see if anything comes up. Um, oh, I can see a flash now, yeah, we see data, I can see the little light flash when I press return on the PC. So we'll power it up again, and I can see the TD light is lit, yep, continuously. So what have we missed? We really don't know whether it's a serial port problem or not, do we? Now we're going to have to go in with the scope and have a little look at the Z80 and all its uh, processes and see whether it's working. Well, this has proved a little bit more complex than I thought. Um, I pulled the Max 232 chip out so I could use the TTL um, serial port. And uh, remarkably, the thing does actually boot but then goes completely wild. So I've tried swapping the RAM chip as well in case that was faulty because it seemed to be a symptom of fading RAM and even reburned the EEPROM just in case it was that. So very strange effect we can have a little look at it in a minute. So 
when we press reset, as you can see, we get the nice one. Cold boot, ooh, pile of junk. Let's power it off. And power it back on again. Hit the reset. Nice clear one. Cold boot. Ooh, memory top, lovely. Excellent. Z80 basic, 32K. Ooh, that doesn't look right. And this is the full effect we get. So let's put in a typical program. And list it. Ooh, we don't see anything. That's funny. And it's locked. Press reset. Try and warm boot it. And we got the junk back. So strange isn't it I did check the refresh was uh, running on the Z18 is a nice clean signal for the RAM chip to refresh so looks like a little bit of investigation is going to be needed on uh, why this board is uh, doing some funny things well we took a bit of a stab in the dark that we were going to address decoding errors so let's press reset we'll do a cold start cold memory oh no Still, it's been running okay for a while until I tried to show it on video. Of course, I'd swap the 74LS32 for another one, and it seems to take longer before the fault comes. That certainly seems to have cured it. It worked out what it was. If we press reset, you get it. Let's warm start it because I did put a program into memory earlier, which is the example from the site. Which if we run it, and it prints our little sine wave on it, and we can list the program again, and it all seems fine. So, what was it? My own stupidity? Yeah, probably. I didn't read the instructions properly, of course, it's uh, Z80 is overclocked to 7.37, so it needs a Z80B. Of course, I had some Z80As, which I plugged in because I keep them for spectrums. There we go. So uh, now on the uh, on the board, we have a real Zilog Z80 CPU and the system's running. So that fixed the problem. Now all I've got to do is get the serial port working again, which will be uh, a chance for another day, I think. There we go. One little Z80 single board computer running. So it did work as well when I put the RS232 back in. This is to the cool retro terminal, CRT, which is clever. It's 115k board by default, which started working as soon as I used that. So next episode, we're going to look at cleaning up the old microprocessor development kit, examine whether its power supply is still feasible, and come up with some way to wire in the board to the back plane so we can restore this machine to its former glory from 1978.